Hello. There we go. Hello, welcome to the American Karate Academy here in Frederick, Maryland. My name's Mark Clark and I'm a martial arts instructor. I've been training in the martial arts for 48 years and I've enjoyed almost every day of it. I've had a lot of experiences that have taught me things about how to move and, and, and how to get uh, your body motion in uh, exercise. And what I want you guys to do is to move and exercise, but I, I don't need you to be in a big space. What we're gonna try to do is we're gonna work in a space that's safe. So if you're in an area, I want you to reach your arms out and try to make sure you're not running into things. Turn in the front and back and the sides. And if you're running into a brother or sister or a dog or a chicken, Make sure you got more space, all right? So again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna reach out, make sure our hands have good space. We're gonna reach up, make sure we're not running into things here. Then reach down, and if you go down, kind of reach down slow, and if there's not anything in your way, well, you're probably okay. Now, open your hands, open them kind of quick. We're gonna do some hand skills. So opening our hands, I want you to reach out and grab, almost like you're grabbing a lightning bug catch it and pull it right back and if you can try to catch them high middle and low and use the open hand grip that we talked about called tiger's mouth grip and grab with it and catch with it and grab and catch grab and catch and see if you can do two and see if you can cross your hands to do those grabs when you grab and pull yourself arms back like this reach and grab and pull now let's try the next one. If you're going to take your hand and open it, keep it flat like you're pushing a wall. Push the wall with two hands if you can. Now get balanced. Let's push the wall. Now let's turn it just a little bit. There you go. Now make the wall face me. So we should be kind of square to one another. Now this wall we can turn on this side of our body and we could turn this wall on this side of our body. We know that. So put your hands right here. Now rotate it as if somebody's pushing you. And then they push you again. And you can turn your shoulders as soon as their hand gets to you. So what we're gonna do, a little bit of a game. I want you to open your hands and I want you to turn like we were doing. But we're imagining somebody's pushing and pushing. And what we're gonna do, we know that if they push us, we can turn out of the way. We learned that this week. But when they push their hand, and we used one of these sticks to replicate an arm, if the hand is coming towards us, we can rotate and do what we call a parry. Now that parry is a tool we use. And if you keep your fingertips this way, don't let your thumb stick out because it can bounce back and hit you. Keep your thumb this way when you parry. If you parry, keep your arm away from your body. And don't do this. Don't chase things. Turn. Turn. Just like we did in the beginning. Turn. Turn. Now that's going to be our parry. So let's parry. Let's parry. Let's parry high. High. Middle. Middle. Parry low. But turn your hand this way. Like if something's kicking you and you're just knocking it out of the way. Parry, parry, parry. Now, parry and press. Now, pressing is a move where we push our hand down and the thumb points down. So we have a push, which makes things go away. And we have a press, which knocks things down. And we have a parry, which redirects things. Let's try again. Ready? Watch. Parry one, parry two, parry push, parry push. Now, parry press, parry press. Can you do that? I bet you can. Let's do it again, ready? Go. Parry high, parry high. Middle, middle, low, low. Now, parry and push. Parry and push. Now, parry and press. Parry and press. Now that's a skill that you can use and you can practice when you've got the space. How much space do we need? We need this much space. And we need to be able to turn in this space. 
because we're going to use our hands another way. Open those chops again and swing these chops across, but don't hit them. Run them across each other and then turn them back and bring them again. So we're going to open our chops, close them, and open again. So open to close and close to open. Let's do it about four times. Ready? Chop. Open chops. Now they're closed. Open them again. And reverse. This motion, this crisscross motion, has a lot of names. I learned a name called crisada. And you're crossing and crisscrossing your arms. And that makes good sense to me. So, I'd like you to practice chopping toward your hands but not striking them. Turning the blades and doing two back chops and returning those. Let's do it again. And you can move your body. So, cross and cross. So they're crisscrossing, open to closed, closed to open. That's the first motion I need you to know. So we've learned a lot today. So far we've learned a parry. We've learned a parry and a push and a parry and a press. And we've also taken our chops out of our hands and turned them into deflections. There are other things. We're gonna use them to crisscross things out of our way. Now, the next and last motion I need you to know today is called passing. And your hands are going to start on that side that we were on just a little while ago. And you're going to turn them to the other side. Turn them to the other side. So this passing motion, we're going to use. We're going to find this move, and we've already talked about it once this week. We're going to use this motion as a technique in our martial skills. And we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. Real quick, let's get warmed up. Okay, hands. Loosen your neck. Imagine somebody strikes you, hits. You want to turn your chin, stretch it good. These muscles in your neck, you need to stretch and flex, but don't twist them quick. Then the other side, stretch good. Now imagine somebody striking you harder. So you want to cover here. Now, if you're just learning to cover, it's a way to wrap your arm around your head. Beginners often put their hand here. More advanced students will turn their hand open. This second hand here is tucked into this position. And these two hands, while they work as a defensive cover, they're also good for jumping off. And we'll do that later, kind of like swimming with our hands. So cover and lean. Cover and lean. And we can do a high cover here. We can do more of a middle cover. And our elbow points forward. A lower cover is like a shield that receives. It's not comfortable, but it works. Now, let's review what we've got. We've got crossing. We've got passing. We've got, if we're struck, we turn or turn. We can cover. We can cover. We learn middle and low cover. So we're moving along pretty good right now. Now, open your feet up, and I want you to step out one way and then the other way. Let's just loosen up. When this foot goes out, use this hand. Kind of wave with it. Here, again, you don't need to be in a big spot. You just need to be in a safe spot. And as this hand goes out, as you wave, let it do a parry one time. So I'm parrying now. Now as I step, I'm going to push. I'm going to push. Now I'm going to press and press. So as I step, I'm changing my motion from parries to pushes to presses. Let's try it. Can you do it? Let's start with our crossing. We have our crossings. Crossada was the word. Passing. We use the word palace palace. Now, use your steps. Step and touch. Touch or wave. I see you, Casey. See you out there, Rowan, Keegan. All right, now from here, change your move to a parry. Timothy, just like this. Turn. Turn. Look straight. Good. Tuck your chin a bit. Now push. Push. Connor, just like this. Keep your fingers together. Good. Cody, press down, just like that. There you go. Excellent. All right, everybody, keep moving and moving. And moving 
and open your stance. Now, if something's running at you, first rule of karate, get out of the way. We want to move our body out of the way. That's why our steps are helpful. But if we're in our position, we're going to go to a tripping position. As I lower my body, I keep my toes forward in my stretch. And I can go to either side, but this allows me to get out of the way of something heavy coming. Now we also talk about receiving things and rolling. That's another conversation. Now, after your stretch that goes forward, here and here, do the one from someone coming from behind you and rotate their heel down and toe up. So now I'll trip someone this way or this way. Ah, oh, look, there's that turning again. We're passing. We're palace, palace. You'll notice that a lot of motions keep repeating themselves. It's because they work and they build on each other. Now, in just a minute, we're going to be moving into a martial art we call Filipino martial arts, which is Kali, Arnis, or Eskrima. And we'll talk a little bit about that. But before we do, I need a quick drink. Give me two seconds. Well, maybe three. Okay, I hope you're back. All right, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to grab these two weapons first. Or not weapons, but tools, we'll call them. And these tools are two short sticks. They remind me of linking logs. When I was young, we would build things. That was prior to Legos. Now... Certainly we can make noise with this and aggravate mom and everybody, but let's not do that yet. If you have one, use one. If you have two, use two. If you have three, share. Now, if you don't have any, breathe in. Use your thumb and stick it out. Now, we also showed how we could take a piece of paper. We could roll that piece of paper up. Now we can make something very similar, just like this. So this can be my training tool. And here's my other training tool. So now, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to review what I taught you this week, starting at attention. We show respects. We cross our arms and raise them high and pull our elbows back. As we punch, then we high block, middle block, and down block. Then we return to ready position. And then we practice our down blocks, our middle blocks, and our high blocks, and our punches, and our kicks, front kick, jab, cross. We had all those drills this week that we learned together, and I thank you for tuning in. We've had almost 15,000 people check us out this week, and we appreciate you checking in. Next week, we're going to have Zoom lessons for our members only. If you want to sign in, just send us a link. All right, here we are. This is our tool. Let's use it in crossing. Cross. Cross. So now it's being used in crossada. Here, here. Here, here. Here, here. Here, here. Now we can do that and we can imagine that if something's coming our way, like that punch, remember as it came in and we talked about parrying, which we can do. Now we have a tool and we could strike the arm coming if necessary. Now we don't want to hurt anyone, so we're going to do a motion in the air. Cross your arms, open your arms. Cross the other side and open the other side. That's a basic way to use these small tools or sticks. Now, they are self-defense tools and can be used for protection. And we talk more about that in our uh, YouTube sites about self-protection and self-defense. But right now, we're going to have a little bit of fun. So, using two tools, I'm going to make this position, the arrow. We talked about the arrow yesterday. You can see the arrow, I can step this way and this way. 
We are calling that an open arrow for now. Now listen, as you step, we were reaching out with this hand to do our parry and this hand. Now I want you to do something similar. As you step out, do two hand moves. Then go two hands here. So you're going to do your crossada, 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 crossada. Now if that's not too difficult, I want you to do this. Watch. Let's step and pass. One, two. Let's step and pass. One, two. Now, if you don't have two sticks, and you don't have one right now, but you do have a piece of paper, still let that piece of paper be your guide. And let yourself step off like you're going on one side, then the other. Passing, passing. Let's play the game, ready? Step and cross, go back. Step and cross, go back. Step and pass, go back. Step and pass, go back. So friends out there that you're learning this, Tyler, you know how to do this. What you're doing is stepping out of a triangle and we're at the apex. We're stepping out. We're either using the crossing move or the double chop or we're using the passing move and we're avoiding what's coming in. And if you remember from yesterday's lesson, this motion can come in and be our arm lock. And that's what we're going to talk about next. Now watch. Before I come back to that tool, I want you to listen and review. Remember our arm position. Straight arms. Bent arms is the lock number two. And this is a reverse position. Then we're going to bend our arms behind us. Then we're going to bring them in front, but the wrists are pressed forward. So when somebody's holding me, they're grabbing and they're turning my wrist. And my wrists are falling forward. That's a forward wrist lock. Now the next motion is when they turn my wrist to the back. And we talked about that yesterday. But this straight arm bar position, the focus now is on the wrist. And it's turning me away. And you guys know about that. Turning you away. So do this exercise. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six. I heard you, Christopher. He calls this the chicken wing. Now turn it upside here. Seven, or center lock. Then vertical palm lock. One more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Those are our locks and grips. We have a lot more. Those are just the bases, kind of like an alphabet. Tells us where to start, and we have them numbered just for us. Now, here's where we were yesterday. We were taking the arm from the stick. We were in the struggle. We turned. We put the person in the pocket. We made contact. We had rotation, and we had direction. We had contact, rotation, and direction. So with those motions, we learned a skill that if we're facing something and it's starting to oppose us, then we're going to draw it in and turn it into the ground or turn it into a control position. Now, those grips were practiced with these moves. First grip, tiger's mouth grip, and that one's the fingers are together. Second grip, tiger's claw grip, and that's where your fingers are open and you're catching. Third one, eagle grip. That's where we're grabbing fingers and toes and such. Things start to hurt when you get that fella involved. Now, here's what I'd like you to do. With your space, with your tool, let's go through it all. Protect yourself. Shield, here, double, strikes, high, middle, down. Now go to ready. Now parry. Now parry. Now turn. Now turn. Now practice crossing and crossing. So I showed you the turning motion after the crossing earlier, but I want you to see how they can be interchangeable. Now, what I want you to do is now practice your footwork. So we're stepping and moving. 
Notice we practice for a minute stationary, then we're practicing moving. We're trying to get our heart rate up, get it working good, and then we're trying to cool down a bit. Then we're getting our heart rate up, working it, and then moving down a bit. And we're trying to make that exercise motion we need. Now, I about did a double step on you. <laughs> so zig, zag, parry, parry, push, push, press, press, cross, cross, pass, pass, high block, high block, middle block, middle block, down block, down block, punch, punch. That's what you know already. If you've been following us a couple days, that was just easy for you. Let's do it again. Protect yourself. Open up your tools. Good. Now we've not even added kicks yet, but we're going to start our motion. Step, step. From stepping, we can add kicking. We can step and kick. We can lean and kick. We can stand stationary and leap and kick. There's a many ways to fire a kick. The first kick we talked about practicing was the front kick. We remembered lifting the knee above the belt was important. We do that so we have a better kick and they can't catch our leg as easily. Front kick. Front kick. We did this combination. Front kick. Jab cross. What I wanted to add today is what my white belts and beginners do. And all of you know how to do it if you're in my program, but I want to review slowly. Ready? Front kick, jab cross, duck, stack your hands, use your knee, then use your elbow, elbow. Cover one, two, three, four, shield. On guard. Now we don't normally move back, <laughs> but we're doing that because we're trying to preserve and conserve space. So let's look again. Front kick, jab, cross, duck, stack your hands, use your knee. Whatever knee or foot lands forward, use front elbow, then back elbow. Then I want you to go to shield or cover motion. Cover two times high and two times middle. Then back on guard. Once again, friends, ready? Last time, ready? Front kick. Jab, cross, duck, stack, knee. Front, back. Cover one, cover two. Now shield and press back. Now I covered twice that time. I think we normally cover four times. So let me do that again. Make a better one. Ready? Front kick, jab, cross, duck, stack, knee, ah, elbow, elbow, cover, 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 cover. I'm off my timing a bit, guys. Here we'll do it one last time. Front kick, jab, cross, duck, grab, knee, elbow, elbow, one, two, three, four, shield. There we go, guys. That's what my white belts start working on right away. And I think you can do that. You might not be able to do it very far across the room, but you can work in one space and do that. Now, today, we covered a lot of material. We covered parries, we covered passing, we covered crossing. Now, next week, I'm gonna be doing classes on Zoom for my guys and my students. If you want in on that, check in at aka-online.com. Now, we also want to be able to keep sharing in our streaming class next week. I have Devin coming back to do some fitness drills. I have Mr. Steve coming back to do some uh, gym uh, grappling skills. And I have a Kali instructor coming to help us with the cane. So we're gonna learn how our grandparents can practice. Or I've had to use a cane before in my life. So you don't have to be that old to need one. I want you guys to stay healthy, stay patient, work with your parents. Use this time to grow up and try to find a way to be mature and, and to be respectful. Parents, if you could use this time as a way to maybe double down on your children and train them on their manners and make sure you keep things the way you want it. 
And I ask all of you to just keep in your prayers, everyone right now in our country and our world, as we get through this time, we're all going to come out better and stronger on the other end. So I wish you well, and I want to thank you for tuning in today. I'll be available tomorrow morning at 1030. I'm going to do a kids class. And then Monday, we're back on track at 530. I hope to do some jiu-jitsu with you right away next week. We thank you again, and have a great day.